I'm joined now by three MPs on the Foreign Affairs Committee to discuss Canada's ongoing response to the war in Ukraine. Rachel Bendine is a Liberal MP and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Tourism. Uh, Michael Chong is the Foreign Affairs Critic for the Official Opposition Conservatives. And Heather McPherson is the Foreign Affairs Critic for the NDP. It's good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Uh, Ms. Bendine, let me start with you if I can. Eleven Prime Ministers, European Presidents, Chancellors, U.S. Senior Cabinet Members, uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, they've all visited Ukraine recently. And I guess a lot of people are wondering why the Canadian Prime Minister hasn't, uh, or any Canadian Cabinet Ministers for that matter. What's the answer? Well, thanks, Peter, for the question. And I would just like to start by saying that the Ambassador-designate for Ukraine came to our Foreign Affairs Committee yesterday, and uh, we all asked her uh, the question in various different ways, and she was quite unequivocal. The thing that the U Ukrainians need the most right now is weapons. Um, and I think that, you know, we should be focused on what Ukraine needs right now. Uh, that is why howitzers have now been delivered from Canada. That is why there are various shipments of, uh, of weapons, including a uh, shipment of weapons which arrived even before the invasion from, from Canada. Right. We are one of the only but countries. But she also, she also did invite members of your committee and all, all Canadian politicians to come and visit Ukraine and it's moment of uh, the darkest moments in Ukraine. So will, will the Prime Minister be going soon? Well, she, she invited the members of, of our committee yesterday and, and, and as as I said, you know, we welcome that invitation. We'll be discussing at our committee on Thursday um, where we will go uh, in order to in order to travel next. Um, I believe. But, but should the I prime believe, minister be there? I believe that the sergeant at arms of the of the House of Commons and, and other security officials will be advising us um, of what is possible in terms of travel. I know that I want to go, and that all uh, many members of this of this house would like uh, to I, go. I, just, well, I, I appreciate that. What I'm asking is, should the prime minister be going? And what I am answering is that security is going to advise us what is possible. We have been a stalwart supporter of Ukrainians in their time of need. And I think we should also be focused on what Ukraine needs right now. And what they need is weapons. Okay, I'm going to talk about that in a bit too. Mr. Chong, your, your committee is actively, as we've heard, considering a visit to Ukraine. Uh, let me start with that first question. Do, do you believe the Prime Minister should have visited Ukraine already, uh, or at least senior cabinet members, to show Canada's solidarity? Yes, I do. I think it's time for either the prime minister or senior minister of this government to go to Ukraine to show solidarity with the government of Ukraine. Many of our allies, as you pointed out in your opening remarks, have already done so. Canada is a G7 country. It's a founding member of NATO. And I think it's important that we show solidarity with Ukraine. Ukraine needs us to provide weapons, yes, but they also need us to support to show political support for the fight for their war against Russia. And so that starts with being physically present. Um, and I think it, speak, it will speak to the institutional capacity of this country, whether or not uh, a minister can get to Ukraine, the prime minister or senior minister mm -hmm. of this government, like the minister of foreign affairs, to show solidarity with the government. Surely we have the security and defense capability to ensure the safety and protection of our ministers when they are there, as have other G7 okay. countries. Uh, Heather McPherson, what's your view on this? Uh, should the Prime Minister uh, be going there, or should he have been there, or senior cabinet members, uh, and, and about your committee heading there as well? Yeah, you know, I think he I think he should. I think now is the time that he should actually be heading to Ukraine, if not past time. Uh, we have a incredibly large uh, Ukrainian diaspora in this country. You know, the prime minister has stood up many times in the House and said he is with the Ukrainian people, but he is, in fact, not with the Ukrainian people. There are, like you mentioned, there are 11 prime ministers who have already gone to Ukraine um, or heads of state. There is there is. I can't imagine a scenario in which it is safe for them, but not safe for, for our prime minister. Um, that said, I think that, you know, I also, like my colleague, um, Madame Bendayan, welcome the opportunity to go to Ukraine and to have an opportunity to stand with Ukrainians. And, and I think it's also very important that we recognize this is not enough. This is, this is one piece of the support that we need to provide to Ukraine right now. It is, it is in a large part symbolic and important, but it is a portion of what needs to be let's, provided so that the people of Ukraine get, let, get the help talk, they need from Canada. Let's talk about that. It's, we've, it's come up here in, at the beginning of our discussion. So let me, uh, Rachel Bendayan, uh, as you touched on, the Ukrainian ambassador uh, pleaded for more prompt delivery of weapons uh, from Canada at your committee hearing uh, yesterday. Uh, the budget last month promised $500 million more in military aid for Ukraine, but most of it uh, yet to be allocated. How can that process be accelerated? Uh, because she made it clear this is an urgent need. 
The ambassador designate absolutely made it clear that the urgency was now. Um, we have spent uh, five months in the chamber uh, debating our fall economic statement of last fall, and so my 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 plea uh, to my conservative colleagues is that we should absolutely have robust debate on the budget, but we should pass the budget quickly so that we can get um, this critical assistance to Ukrainians. I, I I believe that is and it should be our top priority. All right, uh, Mr. Chong, what's your response to that? Uh, the appeal well, to look quite, quite speed simply. up the process and get the money out the door. <laughs> that's incorrect. Uh, the estimates process is what will provide the $500 million in additional assistance for Ukraine. And that's completely separate from the fall economic and fiscal update uh, bill. And it's completely separate from the Budget Implementation Act. Um, that's done through the estimates process. The estimates sail through the House of Commons expeditiously each and every year. Uh, so I'm confident that that will happen again this springtime. So the question is, what will the government be using that money for? They need to come forward with a, a detailed plan um, to provide the lethal weapons that Ukraine has been asking. Look, for years, we have been calling on the government to provide lethal weapons to Ukraine, something they refused to do until Monday, February 14th, the very day the Emergencies Act was invoked. And on that very day, in, in a little known announcement, they did a 180 on their policy and decided at that late hour, just 10 days before the invasion of Ukraine, to provide Ukraine with lethal weapons. So better late than never, uh, but they okay. need to get the money out the door and provide and buy the equipment that Ukraine so desperately needs. H Heather McPherson, what's a reasonable timeline to think, uh, based on the appeals you heard from the Ukrainian ambassador? She's clearly aware of uh, the system and, and how it works, and there is a certain amount of mm -hmm. uh, uh, deliberation around, you know, pushing these funds forward, but she made it clear it's urgent. So how do you speed it up? Well, I mean, first of all, she made it ur she made it very clear that there's urgent need on a number of different mm -hmm. fronts. You know, we've been talking about how sanctions have been rolled out too slowly and that, that the Russian oligarchs have been able to hide the money that could have been used to rebuild Ukraine. She talked about the urgent need for, for defense um, mechanisms for Ukraine. She talked about the urgent need for Canada to assist with things like um, demining a field so that the, the, the crop can go in so that people can actually um, farm wheat, which is going to be a food security problem globally. Um, she spoke about a number of different places where the, the promises have been made, but the action has been too slow, that, that there has been such little recognition by this government of the need for speed and urgency in the face of, of what Ukrainians are facing. So, so I mean, the, the quick answer to your question is the government needs to move faster. They need to do more for Ukraine and they need to do it okay. with urgency. They can't keep announcing and then not actually doing it. It has to go and it has to go now. We only have a little bit of time left here, but uh, let's talk about the last sort of piece of this. And that's uh, for a lot of Canadians and a lot of people watching this situation closely is when will the Canadian uh, embassy in Kiev reopen? Many other countries have either didn't ne never closed the, uh, their missions there or have uh, started to reopen them. So uh, Rachel Ben Diane, uh, can you give us a, an idea of when the Canadian embassy in Kiev will reopen? Oh, thanks for the question, but I would like to push back on, on what my NDP colleague had said. Uh, the ambassador-designate was quite clear that weapons was her priority, and, and it is something that our government has responded to from the get-go and which the NDP were, were against at the time. Um, I would like to also recognize how important it is to reestablish our embassy in Ukraine. Um, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has indicated that we are looking uh, to doing so uh, and quickly, um, but there is obviously also uh, the, the, the importance of ensuring the safety and security of our uh, Canadian staff uh, okay. in Ukraine. M Mr. Chong, what's your view on this? Yes, I believe it's time to reopen the embassy. Many of our closest allies have already reestablished or continued to have a diplomatic presence in Ukraine throughout uh, the last several weeks. The Dutch, for example, have reopened their embassy in Ukraine this week. I think it's time for Canada to do the same. Okay, and a, and a final comment from uh, you, Heather McPherson, on this. I think it's it's unanimous that it absolutely should be happening and it should be happening as as uh, quickly as we can, ensuring the safety, of course, of, of the staff and, and the folks that work in the embassy. All right. I want to thank you all three of you for your time tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, take care and uh, we'll uh, reconnect soon. Bye now. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you.